Anybody who's paying attention knows we're living in a housing crisis. Rents are skyrocketing. People know that when their lease ends, the landlords are almost certainly gonna ask for a rent increase, often $50, $100 a week extra. It's much harder to find a place. At the same time, mortgages are going up. More and more people are being forced out of secure housing, living in tents, couch surfing, etc. It is a terrible crisis. So I was very pleased this week to be able to catch up with Max Chandler Mather, who is the Greens Federal Housing Spokesperson, and he's a member for Griffith. I, I began by asking Max to just outline what is it that what are the shortfalls of Labor's housing plan, and what are the Greens pushing for in, instead? Sure. So basically under Labor's current plan, the housing crisis will literally get worse. Labor's proposal, which is called the Housing Australia Future Fund, is essentially to get $10 billion of public money uh, and gamble it basically on the stock market via the Future Fund, which was set up by Peter Costello. They've then said that any returns by uh, that Future Fund, or well, some of them, would be spent on housing, social and affordable housing every year. The first problem is that last year the Future Fund actually lost 1.2%, so the housing fund would have lost $120 million and not a cent would have been spent on housing. And even where the returns might be good, uh, how ca spending on housing is actually capped at $500 million a year. They've said that um, the target uh, the, of this Housing Australia Future Fund is to help finance the construction of up to uh, 20,000 social and 10,000 so-called affordable homes from 2025 to 2030. Uh, and uh, the problem there is even if they reach those targets, which they almost certainly won't, the shortage of social and affordable housing will get bigger than it is now because it's currently about 640,000 homes and it's due to increase by 75,000 homes uh, over that same five year period. So 30,000 won't even keep up with the increase uh, in the shortage, let alone tackle the overall crisis. Really the bottom line is you wouldn't fund schools or hospitals via some chaotic, risky gamble on the stock market. And really what the government should be doing is just investing directly in building public and affordable housing. Okay, so what are the Greens calling for? So we've made a few negotiating us. The first is uh, the government should invest at least $5 billion a year directly building public and genuinely affordable housing uh, Ideally, we actually want to see much more than that, but we thought that was a good negotiating ask. Uh, and the, secondly, we'd like to see the federal government coordinate a national freeze on rent increases. Uh, the government has coordinated national rental regulation before, they can do it uh, again. And with rents due to increase even faster this year, pushing more people onto the streets and, and actually increasing the demand for social housing, uh, we think it's really urgently needed. Um, you know, we know that actually in the 20th century, the federal government used to have a play a big role in building public housing. And in fact, if uh, on a population basis, if the federal government was building the same amount of public housing as they did in the 1960s, then over the next five years, the federal government would build 150,000 public homes, not 20,000 from 2025 to 2030. Uh, and that would actually start to really tackle the crisis. So we've said we're willing to negotiate in good faith, but as yet, uh, mostly Labor have responded by just issuing threats, and in particular, the Prime Minister. This idea of a, of a rent freeze might seem a bit radical to some people. So I asked Max about some of the arguments that people raise against the idea. One of those arguments is that, well, property owners should just be allowed to charge as much rent as the market will bear. What do you say to that? Well, firstly, housing is, in a, from our view, is a, a central service. It, it, it should be a right for everyone. And um, we wouldn't allow um, any access to any sort of essential service to be left entirely up um, to a private private market, or certainly we shouldn't. Uh, we, do a, we do to a degree with energy and housing should be no different. And uh, we know that rental regulation works around the world. A lot of European countries have either used rent freezes recently or ongoing rent controls to ensure that people can live in their um, place uh, long term. Another argument is that, well, you know, homeowners are just facing rising mortgages. They've got no option but to push up the rent because, because of the rising mortgages. How do you reply to that? Well, the first thing to say is that we've called on the government to stop interest rate increases to um, give mortgage holders relief. Although it's important to note that there's no, there's actually no uh, economic link between increases in, uh, increases in uh, interest rates and increases in rents and, and mortgage repayments. Uh, it might give a landlord an excuse to jack up the rent, but actually rents 
um, are mostly determined by what, as you sort of alluded to before, what the market, what the so-called market will bear. And uh, because housing is essential, it's something people need to live a life, you know, they need a home. Uh, landlords often have renters over a barrel because they know they can force people to spend 50, 60, sometimes 70% of their income on rent. And, and by and large, rentals will wear it as long as they can afford it and pick that over, say, paying other bills or, or even feeding their kids some nights because ultimately they need a roof over their heads. And it's a completely broken system where uh, 30% of the country who rent basically are held at ransom uh, uh, to get what is just as important as healthcare or education, or in some instances, even more important. It's very important we don't just rely on parliamentary negotiations to win concessions from Labor. So I asked Max, what ideas does he have for extra parliamentary, for mobilising extra parliamentary pressure on the Labor government? Yeah, so we um, have been organising some national door knocking, uh, basically targeting late federal Labor electorates and knocking on doors and asking people, do you, the basic question being, uh, this is what Labor's proposed, this is what the Greens are pushing for, so $5 billion a year in public and affordable housing, especially after, you know, the federal government just found $368 billion for nuclear attack submarines. And do you think the Greens should back down? and just support whatever Labor's proposal, or should we hold firm and push for Labor to come to the negotiating table? Over 80% of people said we should hold firm and push for Labor to come and agree to our demands. And this is places like Ipswich in Queensland, where the Greens actually only polled 6% of the vote at the last federal election, but over 80% of people were supportive of our demands. We also, um, so getting involved in that is really useful. Uh, also, we held a large rally, well, not a large rally, but a good rally down uh, in Canberra with the CFMEU. Uh, and uh, really anything that uh, makes clear to Labor that actually the public is against them on this. I mean, the broader context, this is, this is probably the worst housing crisis Australia has faced in generations. You know, you've got millions of people uh, in have some form of housing stress, homeless, stuck on wait lists for social housing, and a lot of other people, one rental increase away from being in that situation. And so um, our... Our strategy is to try and mobilise as many of those people as possible and make Labor realise that there are going to be electoral consequences if they take the sides of the banks and property developers again um, when it comes to, you know, finally taking action, either capping rents or and or building mass build of public and affordable housing, which is entirely impossible. Poss it's entirely possible, technically. Um, the major political barrier at the moment is Labor. I know a number of left Greens that have basically paired both the housing bill and the, the safeguard mechanism, mechanism, which is now past parliament, as two areas, areas in which the Greens were really going to stand up to Labor government. And I know a lot of people, myself included, were disappointed that the Greens passed the safeguard mechanism because it basically entrenches the failed carbon, carbon trading and offsets measures uh, and doesn't really sort of solve the climate problem. And uh, you know, I think the Greens overhyped the, um, the, the, the results of that, what those amendments achieved. So I did ask Max if he wanted to respond to that, which he did, but also uh, what the bottom lines the Greens might have in relation to negotiating with Labor over housing. So this is what Max said about that. Yeah, I, I, I can understand the criticisms of um, Safeguard. I, I, I think uh, the concessions we conceded from Labor on that were um, not insignificant. Uh, although I think, as I've said, I've said clearly very publicly, negotiating with Labor is basically negotiating with the fossil fuel industry. And so uh, uh, anything is probably like getting anything out of them is sort of remarkable. The limitation in that instance was, um, uh, and this is very important to consider long term, uh, we were, the Greens were relatively isolated uh, in this um, debate and fight because there was no mobilisations on the streets. Like... Um, there was no school climate strikes going on during these negotiations. There were no large public rallies. None of the climate, mo no, none of the um, large sections of the climate movement were mobilising in any way. They were completely demobilised, and uh, which meant that the balance of forces uh, in this debate were you had on the one hand even groups like ACF, who, if anyone is listening, if you're a member of the ACF, still quit. I would argue because out there saying, oh, the Greens should just support this, all the way to, you know, all the fossil fuel industry gearing up, saying everyone should support this, to large sections of the media, the Labor Party, uh, and basically large sections of Australian capital, all pushing for everyone to support this. And then on the other hand, it was just the Greens and sort of the Australian Institute doing some good communications work, pointing out how flawed Labor's plan was. It's very difficult to get 
any more major concessions when you basically have a completely demobilised civil society. So I think long term, we need to work out, well, I think a broader lesson for the climate movement in particular and for the Greens is how do we build our social power uh, on the streets and at the doors as, and build the capacity to mobilise on the ground in the same way we mobilised during federal elections and actually mobilise that like that during parliamentary fights, which is a lesson we've taken to housing. And certainly we have made very clear we're not just going to wave this bill through unamended. Um, and we've made very clear, I think, publicly and in private to Labor that we want a substantial increase uh, in direct guaranteed funding every year for public and genuinely affordable uh, housing and uh, action on capping rents in some way. And um, we're not going to back down from that. We've made it very clear. That, of course, poses potential electoral consequences, but we are attempting to mobilise on the ground as well, including large scale re reigniting our large scale door knocking, this time not for electoral politics per se, winning votes, but actually starting to build real social, social pressure on Labor to make significant concessions. What about organising protest actions? Yeah, I, with, um, look, looking forward to um, looking exploring the possibility of organising more. I, my view on protests is it's only worth organising them when you have either big groups like the CFMEU on side willing to help or you are confident you can turn out thousands of people. Um, and I don't think we're necessarily there yet. Um, certainly, if we, could, um, we would definitely organise more protests with the CFMEU and I think that did put some significant pressure on Labor. Um, I think they were surprised to see uh, Greens... Um, MP like me standing on a stage with the um, incoming National Secretary of the CFMEU calling to build, slamming the government and Labor and calling them to build public housing. I think that did have an impact. Um, and we're certainly looking at more in any ways um, to try and um, to try and build pressure and mobilize more people around this, definitely. While I was speaking to Max, I had I wanted to ask him about one other question, which is a question of militarism. We've got the $368 billion for the AUKUS submarines and tying Australia in with the US, even closer with the US Imperialist Alliance. We've also got the Talisman Sabre War Games coming up, which will be mostly in Queensland. Huge military exercises, of, I think the biggest they've ever been. Um, I wanted to ask Max about that. Yeah, really important. And, you know, um, we are actually thinking about organising some large town halls and, and public meetings about... Um, pushing back and fighting it back against the AUKUS deal. I mean, we've had um, on this, We, I mean, it's pretty remarkable. We've had lifelong Labor members, like 30, 40 years, get in touch with our office, living in the electorate, saying, I'm never voting for Labor again because of this. Like, I think they've underestimated the public pushback. Um, and uh, it's essential, you know, because the um, tying ourselves so um, uh, permanently to the US empire and uh, what they seem to be fanging for, which is um, a direct military conflict with China, which would be catastrophic, is catastrophic for Australia. And um, yeah, I think it was telling that while Labor are going around saying we can't find an extra single cent to build public housing, they can, out of nowhere, magic up $368 billion over 30 years, which breaks down to $12 billion a year, by the way, on average. Um, I think says everything we need to know about where Labor is at at the moment. Like they are a, a centre-right, right government uh, with perhaps even more enthusiastically um, uh, militarist uh, than the previous coalition government. And we need to find ways to resist that and, and make Labor suffer electoral consequences for it. So thanks to Max Chandler-Mather for joining us today. Um, thanks for spending your time and for hel helping to explain some of those issues that the Greens are pushing for in relation to housing. Certainly, if it is possible to win a guaranteed funding for public housing, a, a significant boost, that will be a big, important victory. Also, a, a freeze on rents, those things are very important. So we're certainly cheering on the Greens in uh, pushing for those things vis-a-vis um, -vis the Labor government. Um, if you like the work that we here at Green Left do, uh, please become a supporter. It is the most important way that you can both receive the content that we produce, plus um, support the work that we do. Uh, I also did want to just say, as always, uh, this video is recorded on stolen Aboriginal land. I'm coming to you from Jagera Turbal country. Uh, always was, always will be Aboriginal land. If you happen to be in Brisbane, there will be a housing justice rally this coming Saturday, 12 noon in King George Square. If you're able to make it along, I'll, I'll see you there.